family or a young son or a daughter. And this is what the procedure is. And it's talking about an animal that did it three times, a habitual gore or a muid, that the animal gets put down. Says the Gemara, why does it say ben yigach ebas yigach? Tell you that the animal kills a minor, the animal gets put down just like for a, um, killing an adult. Says the Gemara, I need a pasik for that. But like Dino, it's a, it's, a, it's a logical thing. So the Gemara is going to say there's a logic to it, plus there's a Kalvachimah that would have taught us the same thing. Why do we need a Pasik? The logic is, if a person kills another person, they, you know, you, they get, they're, they're punished. And if a cow kills a person, then the cow gets put down. Now, let's compare the two. If a person kills another person, does it really matter who the victim is, the age of the victim? It makes no difference the age. Because the Pasuk says, if you kill any soul, anybody has a living soul, um, you kill, you're liable for murder. So if an animal goes a person, same thing should be. It should be like the Chalik, but there shouldn't be any distinction. Whether the person, the victim was an adult or a minor, it should make a difference. That's question number one. But furthermore, we have a kavuchaim that goes as follows: Ma adam be adam. When a person kills another person, shalasa b'ktanim kidoelim. That what it makes no difference. <clears throat> um, we say, what happens if the murderer is a minor? He doesn't get punished, or she. If the murderer is an adult, they get punished. So we see that a, a minor and an adult is a distinction between the two when they're the culprit. But when it comes to the victim, it really doesn't matter who the victim is, what age. So the same, so shoy bottom, when it comes to a shoy killing a person, it makes no difference what the age of the shoy is, a day old or 10 years old, it makes no difference. The shoy will be punished and put down. So surely, when it comes to the victim, it should make a difference who they are. So why in the world do we need a pasik to tell us that if the victims are a young, uh, a minors, the animal gets put down? Says the mother, no, it's not so simple. I can argue that a person, if they kill another person, it doesn't matter who, the, how old the victim is, because generally we're much stricter when it comes to a person committing the crime. For example, they only cause damage; they have to pay five different kinds of damage: nezek, tsar, ripa, shavas, boishes, you know, for the shame, the uh, unemployment benefits, and the medical bills, and so on. But an animal uh, does that to somebody, uh, he, uh, harms someone, all they pay is nezek. They don't pay the tsar, deep, shavas, abayshas. So therefore, there's a leniency there. Maybe you don't get paid. They don't have to be put down if they killed a minor. No, you know. A person, you pay for the four different payments. When it comes to a cow, you don't have the four different payments. If it says, that's why we need a pasig. Ben yigach lebasigach lechay valaktani kitoyim. Tell you all the victims are makes no difference with the ages. Mainly, so all we know from that pasig is the muad in the animals. A muad kills a, a, a six year old child. The animal gets put down. A betamenai the first three times. How do we know that for a child the animal gets put down? First of all, dinu. So the gemara says. So the gemara says right away. What do you mean? I, I need a pasig. You tell me menai. It's a logical thing that the <clears throat> that the animal should be put down. Even by a time. And what is it? Since the animal is high, whether it's a male or a female, the high if, and, and if the animal kills an adult, right? Then the animal gets put down. And the, and the animal kills a child, the animal gets put down. So it should be the same rules. When an animal kills an adult, even the very first time, a time, the animal gets put down. So too, when the animal kills a youngster, the animal gets put down the very first time. It makes sense. Compare the two. Like halakta by beitam makes it the first time and the fourth time. Ab kishachai ben abbas comes a boy and a girl. Like to halak by beitam makes no difference if it's the first time or the fourth. That's number one logic comparison. Right. And furthermore, I have a kavu chaimet, and the gemara will point out it's a very strange kavu chaimet. Usually, kavu chaimet is you have something lenient, and yet there's a certain stringency. Surely, something which is stricter should should share that same stringency. Here it's going to be the other way around. We're going to have something strict. <clears throat> And that has a that has a that has a certain set of stringent stringent, and so too will say that when it comes to something lenient, you should also have that same chum. And that's going to be the Mara's question. Uh, the kavuchaim, why kavuchaim? Ma ish vi ish. It comes to male, a male and female. They have this. Um, this they, they 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 have this weakness of this chumra that if they cause damage, they have to pay. They have to pay. It doesn't matter whether they're a tam or a mood. <clears throat> um. 
So Ben Abbas, when it comes to a Ben Abbas, the Shayafa, when it comes to a person making the first time, the fourth time, if they cause damage, they have to pay. But when it comes to Ben Abbas, if they cause the damage, they're they're not liable, they're not responsible. Shayafa gave a Zikin, so they have this leniency, they don't have to pay. And then surely, Shalaita Khalak Ben made Talmud, it should be a different Talmud. I don't understand what you're saying. No, I don't understand. I'm going to be done in Tal Bechomer. Where do you find a cow where you say if something strict has a stringency, then surely something lenient should have that same stringency? On the contrary, I'll tell you what the, why we need a pussing. I can say, you know, you know why you cannot learn out from a from an from adults that there makes no difference. Because when they uh, kill somebody, they, they not only they kill physically somebody, but that person can no longer do mitzvahs. So therefore, maybe because you curtail their lives and you you ended their lives and they can no longer do mitzvahs, therefore makes no difference. Tom Muid, you put the animal down. When it comes to kids under bar mitzvah and bas mitzvah, ship tournament and mitzvah, they don't have any mitzvahs. So maybe the first three times the animals get put down. That's why we need the pasik ben yigach a basigach. Now, how do we learn from that pasik? That pasik is talking about a muid. Because the Torah says twice the word yigach. It could have just said, Oi ben basigach, if the animal gored a son or a daughter. Why does it say by each word yigach? To include something else that wasn't there before. And what is that? Betam negicha, bemuid negicha. That the Tam also the Gora is responsible, just like a Muid. Sorry, the Gicha, the Misa, the Gicha, I skipped the word. The Gicha, the Tam, the Gicha, the Muid, that both were even a Tam, if it Gora is it's responsible, the Gicha, the Misa, the Gicha, the Zikin. The Gord, whether it's for killed or whether it's Zikin, you're responsible. Mishnah. Shoy Shayim is Chachem and Kaisel, the Shoy that was leaning against the wall, rubbing itself against the wall, and as a result of that, the wall, you know, collapsed. Crushed a person underneath. Vinaf Allah Adam. So it was unintentional. And we had yesterday an argument between Rabbi and Rabbi Yechanan. If it's unintentional, so the animal won't get killed, do you still pay kaif or not? We're going to have the same argument here between Rabbi Shmuel. Or in the Skaven Lives of Adam, the animal intended to kill, but an animal, and now it killed the person. Again, it's unintentional for a person, the animal does not get stoned. The Kanani of so I wanted to kill a guy instead of kill the Yid. And either what we learned before, um, and and as as explained, since in the laws of Goyim, if an animal kills a Goyim, the animal doesn't get put down. So the laws of Eden also, the animal does not get put down. Then the fall of the animal tend to kill the, an embryo. The Hari ben Kayama and killed a, a child that was uh, alive. Potter, you know, Potter, because all of these cases are examples of unintentional consequences. Amar Shmuel says Shmuel. Um, but even though it's unintentional and unintentional, we don't put the animal down, but kaifa you have to pay. As like yesterday, we learned from the word im, extra word im. And Rab says, like Rabba, potter mezer mezer. Since the animals are not killed, nor do you have to pay kaifa. Says the Gemara, we know that the laws of kaifa only kick in if the animal kills for the fourth time. A muid, not by a tam. Only Rabbi Yitzhak Guli says that a tam pays half a kaifer. But we say either the whole kaifer, the entire kaifer, or no kaifer. So there's no kaifer, and we're talking about a tam, you know, the animal rubbed against the wall and the, and the wall collapsed. So if you're talking about a tam, where does kaifer come into the picture at all? What's Shmuel talking about? Says the Gemara, um, so where does kaifer come in? So we answer, Kidama Rabbi Rabbi is going to explain later on in the Gemara. In the next few days, the muid lipal albane adam bit virus. That if a, if an animal falls into a boy and crushes a person, and you um, talk about you have to pay careful on that and over there, how is it a muid? So the animal fell three times on a person, and the fourth time that's when you pay careful. Is hachanami the muid is chachir albane adam itself. This animal has a habit of, of rubbing itself against the wall and the wall crushing uh, a person underneath it. Big Machlek is Roshani when we say the animals. So we're trying to paint the picture that the animal is a muid. So before we go back, the Gemara says, the If the animal deliberately you know, rubbed against the wall and crushed somebody, then the animal should have been put down the first time. How can animals still be alive and kill a fourth time? Says the Gemara Bish, In the case of the boy, I understand why the animal is still able to be alive. Part of the Gemara's question. The Chaza Yeroike, enough. The animal saw vegetation in the bottom of the pit and it jumped in and there's a person and it crushed. So they had no intention to kill the person, therefore the animal is not put down. On the other hand, the, the animal has a habit of jumping into the bird. You should have been more careful, so therefore you have to pay Kaifa. <clears throat> um, 
But a Hoch Ma'ikel neighbor here is scratching himself against the wall, has an itch, and then the wall collapses and kills three times. Why was the animal put down? Simon said, Hoch Nami be Mizchacha be Kaiso Lahanosai. That um, it's doing it for its own personal benefit. And therefore, the animal, uh, and, and therefore it's a muid, it's a muid. And the animal was not put down. There's a big argument whether the first three times the animal, you know, did it in, 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 and for, and for kill it in, in order to kill. So it establishes being a muid. And now the fourth time, the animal will not get killed because this time was unintentional. And so why wasn't it killed before? Because the animal ran away or something fled. Or it was a muid all the time that's only doing it for the sake of scratching. So it never intended to kill. But since it did it so many times, it's considered a muid. Says the Gemara, um, how in the world do we know what the intention of the animal is? Whether it wants to harm somebody or is doing just to scratch itself? Well, the Gemara says there is a way of detecting, of, the, of identifying that. The boss said, the knock will come as What happens after the wall collapses? If the animal goes back and then rubs itself against the wall, then it's clear that was his intention all along. Never intended to kill anybody. Says the Gemara, but the way Gemara understood right now, the wall goes flying in the air. That's like, like, that's like pebbles flying. That's called Treyrus. And Shreira, as you learned before, there's no kaifer whatsoever, or at least there's only half a kaifer, just like you pay half a nezik. So why are you paying kaifer? My Shreira is ninu. It's only a case of pebbles. I would have more of kahana. They call azul minei minei. It's talking about with the animal shoving the wall while it's scratching itself, and it's not when I mean, the pebbles aren't flying in the air. It's the weight of the animal, the body of the animal that's shoving the wall on top of this other person and crushing him. So it's not Shreira, it's the animal itself. Now the Gemara says, we have a brysa that supports Shmuel, that even though the animal does not get killed, you pay kaifer. But yesterday's Gemara, for whatever reason, the Gemara did not introduce this brysa to support Rabbi Yechon. Tani Gemara says, look at Shmuel. It's actually a question around. It says, there are four possible scenarios. Scenario number one. Yes, chai v'misa b'kaifer. The animal has to be put down. And plus, the animal pays, uh, uh, you pay kaifer. We'll see a regular case of Muad. Then, Viesh, there is a case where a mem dalad on a base, four lines on top. Viesh, chayev be kaifer. You can be chayev and kaifer, but part of is you don't put the animal down. And that's what we're going to say. That's talking about when the animal did it unintentionally. We don't kill the animal, but you pay kaifer, supporting a Shmuel's view and Rabbi Yechel. Viesh, scenario number three, we're talking about a tam. Chayev be said the tam killed even the first time he put the animal down, but a potem and a kaifer. You don't pay kaifer. The yesh potem is mz. There's an instance where you put aside from, you don't put the animal down, nor do you pay kaifer. And that is the animal did it unintentionally. And now the mission the price is spells down. Okay, the move it, Kavana, you did a little bit of chaib, it meets kaifer. Gets put down and you pay kaifer. Move it, Shalai, Kavana, chaib, kaifer, you pay kaifer, pot misa, you don't get killed. Tam, be Kavana, chaib, be misa. A tam, be Kavana, is chaib, be misa, pot him, kaifer, pot from kaifer. Because uh, the time killed intentionally, so you put the animal down, but you don't pay kai for unless you're moved. And time shall be kavana unintentionally potter mizet or mizet. But the zokin of the animal only caused damage, but like had no intention of causing damage, but it did cause damage. Rabbi Yudah says you chayiv, you are chayiv, and um, and Rabbi Shimon says you're potter. Now my time with Rabbi Yudah, Rabbi Yudah says, well, if an animal killed unintentionally, true, the animal doesn't get put down, but you pay kai Same thing here, you're chayiv. <laughs> damage is like kai so the animal killed someone unintentionally and the animal does not get killed yet. When it comes to damages, unintentionally. But Rab Shimon, Rab Shimon, Yalif, Miktola, the sheriff. Shimon says, no, look at the animal itself. We don't punish the animal unless it was intentional. So, too, you shouldn't have to pay. Um, and by damages, you shouldn't have to pay damage unless it's intentional. Rav Shimon Yalov Miktolei Dishay. When you kill a shay, Ma Kotlei Shulei Bekavana. The animal killed with unintentionally potter. We don't put the animal down. Afnei Zokin damage Shulei Bekavana unintentionally potter. But Rav Yehuda, now we ask, why doesn't Rav Yehuda make the same comparison? Now Minei Lebekavana learn from putting the animal down. You don't do it if it's unintentional. So he says very simple. Donin Tashlumin Mit Tashlumin. We're talking about payments. Payments. Look at the other payments. When the animal is a mu is a is a muad. The payment, which is kaifer, is even if it's unintentional. So the animal causes damage, they we kill someone. If the animal causes damage, we should also have to pay, even if it's unintentional. They ain't done it so many misa. Why learn it to have if the animal's put down or not? However, Rabshim and Nami nailed me kaifer. Why does Rabshim learn me kaifer? Don in chiyuvid the shay, me chiyuvid the shay. 
Look at the obligations that are directed at the shayin. The shayin gets put down if he kills someone deliberately, as, as a muid, and the shayin therefore has to pay nizikin. But kaifer has nothing to do with the shayin. Kaifer is a kapara. If kaifer is a kapara, that is to do with the, the owner of the shayin. So how can you compare a payment of a shayin to kaifer? But I guess if you would hold that kaifer is mammon, you're paying uh, the value, value, so therefore it's very similar to nizikin. It's an obligation on the owner. Then the Mishnah said, before we look at the next part of the Mishnah, there's a big argument. What happens if a person intended to kill Mr. A and instead ended up killing Mr. B? Rabbi Shimon says in that case, it's manslaughter, not murder, and we won't punish you. And the Chama say that's murder because you intended to kill a person. You killed the other person, but you intended to kill a person. Actually, in, in the share this afternoon, someone asked an interesting question. What happens if you intended to kill that person, but you thought that that person was A, turned out to be that person was B? Would it be the same argument? You actually carried out your thought, but it turned out to be the wrong person. How do we view that? Which is an interesting question. And I said it's very similar to an argument between Rashi and Tesis and Gemara Shabbos. If somebody intended to cut a cabbage, just lying on the ground, thinking that the cabbage is detached, so he allowed to do that on Shabbos. And it turned out to be that the, the cabbage was mechuber attached. So he just did toilet. He just did an isa deraisa. So the machlek is right. And that's called a misasik. Because unintentional. The machlek is rashi and tesis. Does it, does it mean that you are exempt only if you intended to cut the cabbage? And by mistake, your knife jumped and hit and it cut another cabbage altogether. So your machshav was never carried out. What happens if you cut the very cabbage that you intended to cut? But you thought that it was detached. It turned out to be that it was attached. And there's an argument Rashi and Tesis if that's called Mizasik or that's called your intention was carried out. You wanted to cut this cabbage and you did. So maybe the same argument would be regarding a person. Anyhow, if Shimon holds you wanted to kill Mr. A, you kill Mr. B, you're a putter, and the Chacham say you are high because you wanted to kill. Our Mishnah says if the animal wanted to kill another animal and instead kill a human, it's considered unintentional. So by inference, we can say, what happens if the animal wanted to kill a human and killed another human? Then the animal would be charged and would be put down. So this supports the view of the Chachamim that if you wanted to kill one person, because it says in the Pasuk, we learn out, they have the same laws. So therefore, says the Gemara. Says the Gemara here. Um, sorry, I just lost the play. Oh, yeah. This Gavin Lahadag is a behemoth. You intended to kill an animal. How do you kill a person? Pata ya pata. So we, we can infer, you intended to kill a person, but how did you kill another person? Then the animal will be charged because it's considered intentional. So obviously, Maslitz in the Lake of Shimon does not conform with Rab Shimon's view. The Tanya we learned in a bright Rab Shimon says, I feel in the Skavala Hadagazeb, Hadagazeb, intend to kill one person, you kill another person, Potter, your Potter. Because he says that's considered unintentional. So by an animal also, you would not put the animal down. My time with Rab Shimon, what's his logic? To Amar Kroat says in the Postic, Hashoy Yisakul, become Bail of Yumus. You stone the animal and you kill the owner, but we don't kill the owner. So what does the title mean when it says he killed the owner? Kim Mises, by the Kach Mises, whatever the laws apply to the owner, that applies to the shirt. And by the owner, Rav Shimon says, I hold, if you intended to kill one person, you kill the other, you're a putter. So, so too, I'm going to tell you that if you intended, if the animal intended to kill one person, the other, you're exempt. Ma Bailam, Adam, Chavale, you have to have in mind that very person. Avshanami, Adam, Chavale, you have to have in mind that very person. And how do we talk about Bailam, Gufayim, and all, how do you know by Bailam? It's like if he intended to murder, how do we know that he murdered the wrong person that he's not, he, go, he goes off scot-free? The Omakra, it says in Pasuk there that if a person hates his friend and the Oravloi, and he ambushed him and he prepared for it, then the Kamalov, and he jumped on him. So we see, it says, what do you mean, Loi? Achi is Kavin Loi, the Kamalov. In other words, in order to be considered intentional, you had to have intention to kill this very person. It says the Gemara, um, Rabbanon who disagree, they hold that as long as he intended to kill, it doesn't matter which person that is, you'll be considered you're liable. Hi, the other of loy What do they learn from the post that says you intended for this person? What does it mean? Amir Rabbiana, Prat, it comes to exclude Lazoidic Evan the Goy. You threw a stone, there was a group of people standing in the ground, and you threw a stone there. It's inevitable, it's going to kill somebody, but hey, he done, what are we talking about? And therefore, and we're going to say, in this case, you're exempt. What are we talking about? There's nine goyim and one yid between them. Why don't we learn now? The majority of goyim, of course, is exempt. And even if it's half and half, it's half and half. Maybe it'll be a goy you'll kill, and you don't get killed for it, and maybe it'll be a yid. So 
I need a pussy to tell me the or of loy only if you know if you intended and, and in this case it was half going half in you are pot of course you're pot and Tracy goes further and he talks about you should be pot for other reasons because your warning is not even a definitive warning because you don't know for sure it's going to happen and there are many opinions that say that it has to be asra suffix it's not a valid asra says you know what we're talking about here the nine goyim, sorry, nine yidin and one goyim. So the majority says probably you're gonna kill a yid. And we know when it comes to murder, we follow the majority. When it comes to money matters, we say ain holchin We don't follow majority. But when it comes to din and the fashas, we do. And this is one of the conundrums that we have, and that all our tried to work out traces and shame as well. What's the difference? How can it be that money should be stricter than misa? But the fact is that we follow majority. So what we have done ordinarily, we would have said, "Well, probably you kill a yid, you're a murderer." Of the Avagab, the Ruby Israel, you know, here we're going to say you're not. You know why? We learn a new din from here, and that is as follows: We had it in Psachim. So this, you have nine stores selling kosher meat, and you have one store selling non-kosher meat. If you bought meat and you cannot remember for the life of you where you bought that meat, you were on your phone, you were just walked into a store, you didn't even look up, you paid, and you walked out. So we say that even though the majority of the stores are kosher, so you follow the majority, will assume that meat is kosher. We say, no, it isn't. You know why? Because the suffix started in a fixed place. And kol kivua, kemechza mechza. Anything which is fixed is considered half and half. But if you found the meat out in the street, we're going to say kol de parish, meruba parish. You found it in the street, probably came from the majority of stores, which is kosher. There's no logic to this, even though there's some of the Achrein and Shari Yeshev, Shemeshkop, and others trying to find a logic. Well, there's generally no logic to it. And it's exactly custom. And where do we learn it from? As Rashi says, it's from right here. That Va'ar of Loi, that you planned it, we're talking about that if there were, but if there were nine Yidin and one Goy, in that case, there you are Potter. You cannot say Va'ar of Loi because it's halachically, technically, it's like half and half. Havale, the Ikachot, the one Goy between them, Havale, it is considered Kavua. The whole kavua can mechta mechta. I mean, anything which is fixed is like half and half, and therefore we don't know if you don't know if you would kill the eater of the guy. The suffix nefashim the hakol. The doubt we are lenient. Mishnah shayr haisha a shayr where the owner of the shayr is a woman. Now, even though Kedri told us before that the title is written generally in masculine, but doesn't mean that it's directed to men, not to women, but to everybody. The only when the title clearly uses a word that like ish, then we say ish vel isha. But over here, because the title says, Baal Hashar Yishal, the owner of the shirt, and Baal is, is, a mas- is masculine. So we would have thought that only a, a male has to pay if the shirt misbehaves. So it says, Shari Yishal, even a woman as well. Shari Yishal, even an orphan, that's not so responsible. If the animal kills, we'll put the animal down. The Shari Apotrufus, orphans that have a, a manager to their estate. Shari Midbar. A shirt that is ownerless, shirt a hegdish, a shirt that belongs to hegdish. Again, it's like ownerless. Who, who owns hegdish? The hegdish. And shirt hager, the shirt that belongs to a convert, shemais who died, the ain has no family. So then all his all this stuff is a hefka. In all these cases, so money wise, you don't have to pay, but the animal still will be put down because the animal itself is, poses a danger. So regardless of whether it has an owner or not, we put the animal down. However, Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. Rabbi Yehuda has a dissenting view. He says, Shoyed HaMidbar, an animal without any owner. Shoyed HaHegdish, an animal that belongs to Hegdish. Shoyed HaGeir Shemes, with the animal of a gear that died. Two of them are missing. We don't put the animal down. You know why? They don't have any owner. And the title says, the Huad Bebalo. You have to warn the owner. So clearly, you need to have an owner, according to Rabbi Yehuda. Says you can we learn show you show you Shiva it says seven times the word show in that portion of the Taita. So one time we needed to tell you, you know, the, what actually happened. The other six are all superfluous. Lahavi to teach you these six dinim. Show the Isha, the Shah belongs to a woman, show the same belongs to orphans, show Petrufus to the to overseer and manager, show the Hamidbar, show that's uh, that's ownerless, show the Hegdish, called Hegdish, and show the Gay, Shame Ismail Yoshi. Now he disagrees, he says, Show the Hamidbar and show the Hegdish. He said that Shoyed Midbar and Shoyed Hegdish and Shoyed Hagger Shemes in the ocean, these three examples with no owner whatsoever, Petunin Ami, Silif Shayla, but no owners. Omar Huda said, and this is, you would think it's a bit not fair, but this is Rabbi Huda says, Koytir her Rabbi Huda, Rabbi Huda exempt, a few nogach of Shahidish, if the animal gored, but before you took it to peasant, you decided to make it Hegdish. Or nogach of Hivkir, 
the animal gorged, you have to put the animal down. But before the person had a chance to convene, you decided to make it hefka, ownerless. The law is, says the Kona Buddha, the animal does not get put down. Because when you got to Bezin, you need an owner. There's no owner. The Mai, how does how do we know that that's that's a big Hiddish? It's not even fair. How do we know? Because it says Tarti. It says in the Mishnah two examples, and it seems to be redundant. Shoda Midbar, a shirt that's ownerless, and then Shoda Ger, Shemes, and Lo Yoshin. Shoda of a Ger that has no Yoshin. That's also ownerless. Shoda Ger, Shemes, Mine, what is that? Kinin Lo Yoshin has no ears. Ears. How will they show it? It belongs to no one. Hine Shoda Midbar, Hine Shoda Ger, Shemes, and Lo Yoshin. Exactly the same case. Elab must be two different scenarios. How come I come to teach you? I feel no gach will be saved Hegdish, even though good, and only later on you may Hegdish. Nogach or Gord or the Saif Hifkir later, I may have here. The law is that it's exempt. Shma Mino, that's a good proof. Tanya Namihoch, we actually learned this in the Bryce. Yes, I can have your reason furthermore. If you know Nogach or Hiddish, a Gord and then you made it Hagdish. Nogach or Hifkir, you Gord and then you made it Hefkir. Part of your exemption, remember it says, well, who would be by love? It has to have owners, behemoths. Actually, it means a mother of Adin Shomik Echot, that you need that the animal should commit its crime and to be judged. Under the in the same condition that it's not ownerless. There is a machlek is a shining. What happens if there is an owner, but you sold it to another owner? Does it have to be the same owner? Or as long as it has an owner from the beginning to the end, the animal gets put down. So there's a big argument there. Well, let's say that you went to court. But what about the, the if you decided to make it hefke before the court issues its verdict? What happens then? But I'll show you circle Gemar, you know, it's, it's impossible where you're learning. It says that the, the animal gets stoned. The animal will not get stoned unless Bezin issues a, a verdict that the animal should get stoned. Elaine, well, you're right. So let's amend the words. Actually, Misa, the Hamad, the Bedin, the Gemar, Din, Shavin, Kecha, that you need to have an owner from the beginning to the very, very end until the final sentence. Mishnah. So now the next stage. The animal is going out to be stoned. And on the way to be stoned, but the animal is still alive. There's a big argument, Rabbeinu Tam and Rashi. Rabbeinu Tam holds that the animal is still alive. It was sentenced to be stoned, and as long as it's alive, it's mutter bahano. You can have benefit from it. And according to Rashi, the moment that the bezin issued a sentence that the animal should be stoned, you can no longer have a no. So according to Rabbeinu Tam, even though you're permitted to have a no, but we justice delayed is justice denied, we, we have no right to delay it, and therefore we decided to not allow you to make it hegdish, because you're delaying the, 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 the ultimate thing of the, of the show to be put down. Shows you Yitzhak is on the way to be to be stoned. The Hidisha Baila, the owner decided to make it Hegish. Ain't a Mugdish, it doesn't work. We'll see the Gemara tomorrow, why not? Shachtu, you shechted animal, sorry, Asr. Once the Bezin sentence, and if you shechted according to everybody, it's Asr Bahana. We already had this a few days ago, Baal Shar Naki. The Yimachala Nibadina, but before the, it's already in front of the court, but the Bezin hasn't yet issued the final determination. You decide to make it Hegish. Balav, the Bible made a Hegish, Mugdish, it works. Beam Shachtib Sarmutan, if you Shachtib, the flesh is Mutan. So if you decide to make it Hefkid, it's a valid Hefkid. Most, not a new part of the mission, under the first part. We learned before a concept that it Rishus Mishana. If let's say it became a mood by me, then I sold it to you, we recalibrate, you start all over again. If you learn that you know the, the owner has to be careful and vigilant, so you start all over again. Here, the animal was. Um, was all right, and you and you gave it to a shamer. Do we consider a shamer as if you changed in the rishus or not? So this Mishnah says, Master the shamer chinam, that four kinds of shamer. You gave it to a shamer chinam to watch for you, which basically he's not responsible for anything except negligence. And um, you gave it to somebody barred from you, and somebody barred from you is responsible for everything, including accidents. And then a nice sacher, somebody who gets paid. Somebody gets paid has, has more responsibilities. If it got stolen, or lost, he's responsible. Now it was an accident. Or the seichid, this is the fourth kind. Big machlek is Rameh, Rabbi Huda, whether Rameh says that a seichid has the same din like a shemachinim. He pays, so he's like a shemachinim. And, and according to Rabbi Huda, no, he has the same status as a seichid. He's responsible for Gnera Vedim. Anyway, any of these shemachinim, they take over, they're like an extension of the owner. And move it. If the animals are moving, you don't say, oh, let's recalibrate because it's a new owner. No, the shaman is standing in the shoes of the owner. If the animals are moving, Mishal and Shalom, then whatever the show commits a crime, you pay just like a muid, full nest. But Tom, if the owner is a Tom, if the animals are Tom, Mishal and Chatzin, you only pay half a nest.